<laughs> Hi there. Uh, this video is going to show um, traders that are using our Forex News Calendar professional tool how to use the API to integrate into their own automated trading systems. So this tool is a calendar that you can uh, run as a CBOT on CTrader and uh, it gives alerts in the form of um, email, SMS and um, telegram messages just before a news release you can configure it but also at the same time it'll actually allow you to um, it sends signals to connect to your or it talks to your automated trading system so your CBOTs to tell them to stop trading so you can also you can stop trading pause trading as well as close any open positions. Now I'm going to show you the API and how it works. Um, if you're not familiar with this tool here, just come to our website, look up C Trader Forex News Calendar Professional. Um, I'll put a link at the bottom of this YouTube video and you should be able to find it easy enough. So this is just an additional tool um, API and I'll just go to the help um, page here. So it's the knowledge base. So on the knowledge base, we've also documented what it does. Um, so if you know, if, I, my, if I'm speaking too fast or your English isn't your first language, you can read this and it will give you more information how to use it. OK, so what I'll do, go straight to C Trader. Now, what you'll do, um, actually, I'll go back to that page again because I just wanted to show you something that was missing, is that when you download the product, it'll automatically add to your shopping basket the uh, News Calendar API. If um, on the other hand, that you're not using our News Calendar API or you just want this tool, you can download it from this page here. I'll just go to it now. Um, you'll find it again on our website. It's easy to find. Um, you can look up in the search engine there or you can go into software trading indicators, best free indicators, and you'll find it. Anyway, this API, you can download it by just adding to cart and going through checkout. Um, again, this gives you more information how to use the API as well as a video, which is going to go in here. And this is the video that I'm doing now is going to explain how to use this API. OK, so that's enough of that. I'll go straight into it now. So on that page, when you download the file, um, onto your desktop, it will be a zipped file. Just unzip it um, and then find on that unzipped file, there'll be a file called um, cbot, uh, sorry, .algo. You'll be two files, one will be .algo and the other one will be, um, actually I'll show you. So that'll be easy to show you, won't it? There'll be two files and when these files come in, I'll go to here and I'll just go down here. So if you have a look in here, I'll tell you there's two files. One is the clickalgo.newsmanager.client dot dll this is a dll or an assembly and the other one is the um, click algo news manager example dot algo now this is the example robot that uses the assembly to manage news releases so this is an example to show you how to integrate it into your own robots so um, i'm assuming that you've already double clicked and installed the example which is this here i'm looking at here and this is what you'll see it's very basic very straightforward it will just give you this view um, so what i'm going to do is just step by step show you how to actually use it for starters, you need to add a reference to the News Manager Assembly or DLL, otherwise it won't work. To do that, you go to Manage References and you go to Libraries and Browse up here. Now I've put it, I've actually created a folder under the sources of, of uh, the clicker, uh, the C Trader um, folders. So if you go, the C Trader has a folder called Algo Sources under um, your documents. Now I've called it Click Algo API, and this is where your robots are, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. And this is where your indicators are uh, sleeping, resting. So go into here, and then you just want to select this DLL. Click Open, and it's in here. You want to check it there and apply. Now to test that it's actually got the reference correctly, you just build it by clicking on this little build icon here. And if a little red dot disappears, it means it's built. OK, so this is built. It's actually working now. Now I'm going to give you a quick example in um, Visual, sorry, the uh, development environment of C Trader. So I'm not going to open up Visual Studio. I will do at the end, but I'll just um, show you because most people probably will not use C, uh, Visual Studio. You'll use this. So I'll just do a brief overview using this and I'll go into C Trader. Uh, sorry, C Trader. I'll go into Visual Studio and give you an overview with C Trader. OK, so for example, um, what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got this using at the top of the page here. That needs to be included. That will be if you're using the example library. So if you're using your own automated trading system, um, just make sure that you add this library at the top. So that will include the library of the DLL that we just referenced. And it means we can access its properties and methods now. The next thing you want to do is where it's got access rights, make sure it's full access. OK, so you need that so you can actually get the signals from the um, trading, uh, the uh, news calendar that we we had previously, I showed you previously. OK, in the on start, this is where you initialize your um, news signal 
um, object. So this is where we're going to do it. So all you do, you create a private variable here, news signal. Okay, um, there it is there. That's the variable. Now you just define it here, and you create an object based on this um, class. So what you pass in, this is just the actual robot object. This sim this dot symbol name is the name of the symbol that you want to manage. In this case, um, it will be the symbol that you've added an instance on, which is Euro USD. Now, if you select true here, it's the third parameter, that means um, the assembly or the API will automatically close all your positions for this symbol, which is Euro USD, prior to a news release. Now, what I'm going to show you now is um, something, uh, how, it, how it's actually configured. So if I go to here, to the actual application, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll actually start it here. Now I'm going to go to the News Manager Pro because this is the, the tool that's going to be used that's going to send signals to your robots to tell them to pause trading. You only need one of these and it will work for all, um, it will work for all, all your trading robots. It's not just a single one. So all your currency symbol trading robots. So if you had many different robots integrate in this and they were all different symbols, as the news release is about to happen, it will actually tell you. Okay, so what defines when you get that signal is this at the bottom here, alert settings. Here I've got it set as five minutes before news. If I turn it on, and then five minutes after news. Now what will happen is, if I leave this running, five minutes before a major news event, in your code here, the example code, it will actually um, close all your open positions for that um, thing, if you select true. If you use this down here, and you comment this one out, because the last parameter is false, it will mean that before the news release, it will not close open positions. It will let them continue to run. So this optional parameter allows you to decide if you want positions to stay open or close. So you can choose between the two. Now I'm just going to go back to the um, application again. Okay, so on here, I've selected five minutes before a major news events and five minutes after. Now, if you're wondering where the signals are coming from, it's if I go to news event log and click on the registry button, um, it just puts an entry in the registry. Okay, your Windows registry um, just puts an entry in. These are all the symbols that are loaded into the um, news events here, all the symbols, and they're all set as false. So prior to a news event, um, that was coming up here, for example, say five minutes before, one of these will change to true. Now, if that changes to true, um, your code here, let's just move this out of the way, your code here will start. It will actually start working. Now, this is something else I need to show you. So um, the on bar method is called every time a candle closes. So every time um, a bar closes or a candle has finished forming, so on a one minute time frame, it'll be every minute this will get called. On a one hour time frame, this will get called every one hour. Um, a lot of people put their code in the on bar to manage opening positions. So if you had logic in here to open positions, you just want to add this bit of code at the top. And it says, if it's news release, is news release, return out of this method, which means it will not continue and open up new positions. If you're putting your logic to open up new positions on tick, which means every time there's an incoming tick of data, or every time there's a price change for your symbol, it will be called, which could be many times per second on high volume, you know, when there's a lot of uh, movement. Um, again, you put the same bit of code in there, you come out of that and you don't use it. So that gives you two options, whether you're using your logic for your robot on bar or on tick. And that's all you need to do. So in reality, you just pretty much construct the object, decide whether you want the positions to close or not. Um, and you can have this Boolean here as an optional parameter that the user can select. And then you can choose on bar or on tick. That's all you need to add, okay? Um, so that will work. If you want to test it, um, rather than having to wait, in this case, 12 minutes and four seconds before the next news release, which is this one, what you can do is um, open up the registry window again. And I can actually um, simulate a USD news event that's about to happen. And to do that, I scroll down and find USD. Now you probably see it before me. My eyes are going, I cannot find USD. I'm sure it's there somewhere, well, there it is. You double click on the USD, sorry about that. So you just did double click on it and it shows false. You just change this to true, with a capital T. Now that's, that's my keyboard, T-R-U-E, there you go. So what that's gonna do now, that set that to true. Um, if you were running this robot here, I'll just move this out of the way. This, if this was running, this robot, 
it will wait a few seconds and it will pick up that that flag is true. It will then um, stop any trading that's going on here by setting this is news release to true and it will also close open positions. Now you can test that to see if it works or not. So all you need to do, we know for a fact that our um, product here will actually update um, these values to true, say in this example, I don't know, five minutes before the news release and then it will set it to false five minutes after the news release. Okay, we know that it will do that. It's set to the true and false. So all you need to do to make sure that your automated systems are working is change the value for the symbol that you want to trade and um, make sure this code is working in here. Okay, so I'm hoping you found that useful. What I'm going to do is quickly show you in Visual Studio and why Visual Studio is far better um, as a development environment to actually debug your code and to run it to make sure it's working. So here we go. This is Visual Studio here. Now with this, the difference is I can actually symbol name. Okay, that's just because the API has been updated to CTrader. So with this, um, I can actually open up the parenthesis there and actually see the parameter values that need to go in. Okay, so it allows you to do that. It also allows you to add a breakpoint. And we've got another video if you're not familiar with debugging with Visual Studio, but we have a video to show you. And you could actually debug through your code to make sure that when you update that registry value um, that I showed you well, previously on that window, um, this will get picked up by the debugger and you can step through the code and make sure that it's doing what it should do and that it's pausing your robot and actually not opening any new positions. So there you go, that's the video. That's all I wanted to show you. Um, if you do like the video, please give me a thumbs up because that really helps our rankings and we can create more videos for you. And also um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Okay, thank you very much.